um, after you know flying helicopters and you know that type of thing. And I don't know. Maybe I can teach you how to fix vibration problems. Are you with me? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of case histories that I've kind of worked on over uh, over my career. And I think case histories are a good learning tool. You kind of see the approach, and, and it gives you kind of like we, we came, we saw, we conquered, and, you know, that type of thing. So we're going to be doing a number of case histories uh, this morning that are just titled How to Fix Vibration Problems. And generally, we're looking for something not to put a Band-Aid on it, but to do root cause failure analysis type of fix. All right, fix the problem so hopefully it won't uh, occur again. Next thing, very interesting pictures here. I just titled it, Why Did They Break? All right, why did the coupling bolts fail on a coupling? I mean, actually broke off and became shrapnel. Machine description, 4,000 horsepower, 12 pole motor, it drives a fluid coupling or fluid drive that then drives a big ID fan and they, the fluid drive allows them to change fan speed based on process conditions, but the motor is constant speed 12 pole motor. All right, we're looking at the, the uh, motor. There's the coupling and goes into the fluid drive. Then the other end down here, there's another coupling and then the large uh, ID fan. All right, um, again, it, triggered by excessive vibration. This is the trend that we've had, and we went from here to here. These are approximately monthly readings. We would go out and run the survey. And um, again, it's too bad Jason wasn't here because we were out there working. It was probably 5.30 at night. Everybody else is gone. This is a cement plant. All right, he's working on this one. I'm working somewhere else, and I get a cell phone call. He says, you got to come over and look at this. It's, this is horrendous. You know, we're looking at 1.4 inches per second on, what was that, 4,000 horsepower. You know, there's a lot of energy. He said, you know, we've, we've got to look at this, you know, and figure out what's going on right now. So we did. We came in, and we took some, some uh, vibration spectra readings, there's one times, two, three, four, you know, a whole bunch of, again, one times was the predominant, but almost looks like a looseness type of situation here when you see those, those multiple peaks. All right, so again, when we talked about a test plan, and I said, well, the first thing is we need to call somebody, you know, uh, from the plant because I don't want to leave them, you know, running this thing at 1.4 inches per second. And so we call the, the engineer that we work for who was at home. He had already gone for the day. And I said, you got a real problem on this fan. And he said, okay. He said, we'll take it up at our morning, morning meeting. I went, what? <laughs> he says, yeah, we get together at 7 o'clock in the morning. We'll, we'll have a discussion on this. You know, and I said, I don't think you ought to let this thing run. He said, no, we're going we're gonna to run it. Very costly to shut down. Shut this down, you shut the whole cement plant down. A couple hundred thousand dollars an hour. No, we're gonna, we'll run it. Okay, I'm not gonna be there. Yeah. So, um, we said, well, what can we do from a test plan? Part of that was we could measure phase at several points on the motor. Again, try to visualize how is this motor vibrating? And we could use a two channel analyzer to get cross channel phase again. How is the motor moving relative to that fluid coupling. Are they moving there together or are they moving opposite each other? What is the relative motion between those? All right, <clears throat> we went ahead and did that that night because I figured, well, we're gonna have data. At least if it wrecks, we'll have some data and then we can go to the morning meeting and go, ah, we told you so, you know? <laughs> and. Uh, so we, uh, we did that and we found that it was out of phase motion, which means the motor and the fluid drive are doing this. All right, which again points to a coupling situation. There's a thing called coupling lockup. It's a flexible coupling, gear type uh, coupling. And if the teeth get worn, they can actually cold weld or freeze. And then you can no longer take care of any misalignment 
and then the, the, the machines fight, fight each other. All right, so we, we got some data. All right, um, again, our diagnosis was a potential co coupling lockup, that the, the <laughs> coupling uh, wasn't, wasn't free to act as a flexible coupling any longer. <clears throat> got back the next morning, they had had a quick meeting and had already shut it down. And this is the picture when they got the coupling guard off. There's the coupling. There's a bolt there. I think there's a bolt here. But se there was seven of the coupling bolts were sheared and gone. I mean, we went around and looked and you'd find you know, nuts and bolts and everything laying around in the room. All right. And the coupling had separated about a sixteenth of an inch. Notice it's it's close here at the top, but it's open at the bottom. All right, it was just starting to come apart. And we looked at this and we said, "Wow, do you really realize how lucky you were? You know, from you know having a catastrophic failure." And they said, "Oh, we shared all of the bolts two weeks ago." <laughs> and and it just. The bolt sheared and the coupling halves moved apart and the motor just kept running and you know they came back in. They did a repair. Of course, all the bolts were broken and if you've used these couplings, there's shoulder bolts that you're supposed to have in there and there's certain, you know, hardness and everything else. They just went over and got uh, normal uh, grade five uh, flange, pipe flange bolts and, and bolted it together with that. All right, and so we started looking at it, and there was a lot of, of wear to the teeth on the coupling. Um, we looked at it and said, you know, and, and they're putting it back together, you know, and because they didn't have a spare coupling, and said, well, you know, I was talking to the, one of the machinists, and I said, well, you ought to stone the teeth off to smooth them out. And he just looked at me, and he said, stone? What? what? And the other guy said, he means file them. And so that's what they did, at least. They came in with a file, and they just filed the teeth to get all the burrs off of the teeth. Never even cleaned the old grease out of the coupling. Slapped it back together and started it up. All right. Um, the other issue we came into was we talked to the coupling manufacturer, and they said, in a pinch, okay, you can use grade 5 bolts. All right. They, they just wanted to make sure you followed the torque. And, and the bolt torque chart that they used for, again, bolting flanges together, pipe flanges, said that those bolts should be torqued to 420 foot-pounds. Manufacturer says that coupling bolt should be torqued to 155 foot-pounds. They're over-torquing over the bolts. Now when you put the additional stress on them from the coupling, you're just over-stressing the, the bolts and they break. All right, so they retorqued them, um, and you know, uh, yeah, got you know got the machine up and running, and um, you know everything was was running okay, um, but <clears throat> we noticed that when they got up to about ninety five percent of speed on the fan the vibration and the noise increased. And we said, hmm, what's happening there? All right, and so after the, you know, the damage and everything else, we were back here, but we said, you get that high vibration. What we were pretty sure we were looking at was a torsional natural frequency, where the, the when you got up to that, that speed on the fan, the fan would would crank and then back off, back and forth, just exciting that twisting the shaft dynamically, you know, in a torsional. And so we looked and said, you need to keep that speed down to, to less than 95% of full speed, or you're probably going to have, you know, more damage to the coupling. You're probably going to break the coupling bolts again. All right, so this is a plot over several months of RPM versus um, the uh, amplitude of vibration. And as the amplitude, or as the, the RPM increased, 
they ran into much higher vibration. Production said, we can't live with 95%. We're going up to full speed. And so they went ahead and took it up to, to full speed without letting maintenance know, they're saying anyways. All right. And um, ran with much higher vibration. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, um, fluid drive manufacturer said that when you get up to above 95% in a fluid drive, that that fluid drive basically becomes rigid. The, the plates are so close together that there's not that fluid to allow for torsional and the cup it basically becomes rigid and that was where they were hitting the, uh, the torsional natural frequency.